What are the keys for Miami quarterback Tyler Van Dyke to have a better 2023 than he did have in 2022? I'll start with this. I have no belief that Tyler Van Dyke just became a worst football player from 2021 and 2022. In 21, 25 touchdowns, six picks. In 2022, he was dinged up a little bit now, but he threw for 10 touchdowns, five interceptions. And I'm just not buying that Tyler Van Dyke isn't still that guy. We had Gary Furman from Kane Sport on the On3 Roundtable, so make sure you go and check out that channel. We had him on the show, and he told us, listen, the Tyler Van Dyke smoke that was going around on message boards and all those rumors you were hearing on the internet, those were absolutely true about him potentially being a target for Alabama. So, at the very least, Nick Saban thought Tyler Van Dyke was good enough to play quarterback for him. As if I'm reading between the lines there and taking that at face value, that's what that means to me. So, Tyler Van Dyke for 2023... I think it'll be a better year for him. What goes into that? Well, what went into what happened in 2021 and 2022? The coordinator switch, right? And we had Mario Cristobal, the head coach for the Miami Hurricanes, on this very show. And he just told us, listen, man, nobody's fault. Offensively, last year just wasn't a fit for what we were trying to do. Just wasn't a fit. Okay, that's fine. Enter into the fray now, Shannon Dawson calling the offense. I get excited about Shannon Dawson calling the offense for Miami. Because Shannon Dawson has played quarterback before. He's coached quarterbacks before. And this is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a dunk on Josh Gaddis. But when you look at the history of those two guys and the positions they've coached, Josh Gaddis has a history coaching wide receivers. Shannon Dawson has a history coaching quarterbacks. And so why that's important, as the coordinator, it is paramount for you to speak the same language as your quarterback. And by nature of the positions they've coached, you would imagine it's easier for a former quarterback and quarterback coach to be more easily synced up with your quarterback than it would be a wide receivers coach to sync up with your quarterback. Does that make sense? Can we agree that feels like common sense? There's a lot of conversation around the air raid offense and how that'll look. I'm not here to break it down schematically for you. But by nature of what we've heard out of Miami from spring football, it sounds like they've installed the majority of that offense during spring ball. So I'm sitting here saying, okay, you, you installed the majority of your offense in 15 practices. That means it's easy to process. If it's easy to process and learn, then it's easy to take to the field and just ball. And when you're able to process quickly on the field, you get to let the instincts take over. Then you're not thinking so much. You're just playing football out there. You get to just go out there and sling it. And Tyler Van Dyke, he's proven he can sling it. So I think this will be a really good fit. In summary, Shannon Dawson... Tyler Van Dyke, better fit for what they do for what they want to do offensively. I think it'll be a better situation for them production-wise in 2023. You'll see an uptick from Tyler Van Dyke in this season under this new scheme. Make sure to subscribe right here now. We've had a lot of y'all loyal, raging Miami Hurricane fans come join this show in the last couple of weeks. So, one, we're glad to have you here. And if you haven't yet joined the party and subscribed, no time like the present. We're live tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Hit the bell on this channel to make sure you get notified when we do go live. All right, we appreciate y'all in advance for that. Another reason why I believe Tyler Van Dyke is going to be substantially better in 2023, you look at what he had last year on the offensive line, and again, I'm not here to dunk on the offensive line, but we judge you by your resume, and the resume last year for this O-line, man, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. And there's a reason now Mario Cristobal went to the portal and got himself two offensive linemen and Javion Cohen and Matt Lee, who I believe are going to start for you. There's a reason why Francis Mauagoa is getting first team reps as a true freshman at tackle. There's a reason for all that because last year wasn't good enough. Going back to the resume, the sack rate for Miami was 8.5%. 8.5% of the offensive snaps Miami was taken last year ended in a sack. Y'all... It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that's not great. And that makes Tyler Van Dyke's job a whole heck of a lot harder. Put it this way. Imagine that someone cut your workday in half. You're saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yes, I hear you on that. But imagine you have the same expectations for what you need to deliver on, but you get a four-hour workday. That makes your job harder, right? It made Tyler Van Dyke's job harder. I'm not buying that he became a worse quarterback from 21 to 22. I don't believe it. I do believe that his job got harder because he had much less time to deliver the football to his playmakers. And to make matters worse, his playmakers didn't do him a whole lot of favors. 
Miami dropped 25 passes last year. Some quick math would tell you that's right around two drops a game. That ain't great now. That ain't great. That's not winning football. So this is the key variable for me for Tyler Van Dyke in terms of being successful in 23. I think he's got all the ability in the world to be successful. I don't have any reservations about that. I think the protection will be better. I think the scheme will be more suited to him. So with that being said now, receivers, we got to step up. That number I just said, 25 drops in 2022, it's not going to cut it. Not the standard at the U, not the standard to win football games in Miami. So some guys that I'm looking to have good seasons in 23, Xavier Estrepo, back healthy. You would hope for the duration of 23. He is that alpha dog at wide receiver. Reliable, durable in the slot for him. Goes over the middle. I like him a lot. Expect him to be productive yet again. One guy we've heard a fair amount about, Ray Ray Joseph. A young and who I think would have a big impact. Guy to keep an eye on. Somebody has to step up for this group. Somebody has to be the guy that can separate, consistently catch the football, and be the reliable target for Tyler Van Dyke. Because if you don't have someone to catch the rock for you, well, then the quarterback's going to look bad. And that happened a lot last year. So a lot of things around Tyler Van Dyke, I believe, are set up to be successful. That Alabama smoke, according to Gary Furman, was absolutely real. Nick Saban wanted him on his football team, by the way it sounds. I have a rule in life. If he's good enough for Saban, he's good enough for me. I think Tyler Van Dyke is set for a really strong bounce back year in 2023. And I think Miami will reap the dividends of that. But again, Miami Hurricane fans, lock it in right here. We talk college football every single day. It's the middle of May. We're talking college football and you're watching a college football video on YouTube. I promise you now we're cut from the same cloth. Make sure you lock in right here and subscribe. Make sure you join us again tomorrow morning now. We're going to be live and live in living color. Get in the chat with us, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Hit the bell on this channel to be notified when we go live. It'll be a good time. Can't wait to see you all there. So with that being said, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.